Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Courtney and this is Creative on the Cheap where I like to do budget friendly DIYs and home decor. Today I'm very excited because I'm getting to bring you another product that I saw at Creativation. So when I went to that conference back in January with the Daily DIYer and Little Bit of Common Crazy, we stopped by the Wagner booth. And the Wagner booth had heat guns, they had spray painting tents, they had uh, paint sprayers, all kinds of awesome DIYs things that you definitely probably need in your arsenal but on the heat gun guess what we did we made s'mores I'm not making s'mores today but I was super excited to make three projects using this heat gun that Wagner sent me guys I have never done a heat gun project on my channel I'd never used a heat gun up until now and I have to say I am loving it this thing is awesome to start with if you don't have one um, I found it really easy to use because I could pencil grip it do a little bit more of a sturdy grip but guys this feature right here pop the stand down set it on your table and go hands-free that was like I, I mean a game changer for me so I'm super excited to show you guys what I am making I will leave all the details to this specific heat gun uh, down below in the description box but guys let's get into today's project thank you Wagner for sponsoring today's video and I can't wait to show you what I made with it so let's go for this first project, I'm going to be crackling this wooden frame. So first I will take the glass and the backing out and set that aside. Then I'm going to take some truffle Waverly chalk paint and paint a coat on the frame. I'm going to use this heat gun to help speed up the process because I really am impatient when it comes to paint drying. And then I'll give it one more coat of the truffle chalk paint and then I'm going to set it aside so I can work on my insert. For the background on the inside of the frame, I'm using this scrapbook paper. I got this from one of those five season packs. I have a couple of them. Hobby Lobby usually puts out a new one every year. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the glass as my template to know what size I wanna cut this paper down. And then once I do that, I'm going to be taking some of these pom-poms that I purchased at Dollar Tree. There were headbands in the hair section. And I'm gonna cut them apart and use this to make a little garland to string up at the top of this frame. My frame is completely dried and here is our next step. So taking some regular old school glue, I'm just using this glue from Dollar Tree, it works totally fine. You're going to want to brush the entire frame with a nice coat of the glue. Now you do not want this glue to dry. You let it, I probably let it sit, I don't know, two or three minutes, but you want it to be pretty wet still when you go in with your lighter color. So the darker color goes first, then your glue, and then you go in very quickly and go ahead and paint the lighter color. For my lighter color, I will be using the Waverly Plaster because the scrapbook paper wasn't a pure white and I kind of wanted the frame to match that. I'm going to go in and give this one really thick coat and then as soon as I do that, you're going to want to get your heat gun ready to start getting it to crackle. Here comes the fun part. So taking your heat gun, you're going to turn it on. I put mine on the high heat setting and you're just going to move all the way around the frame. You can see as the little kind of dark brown is starting to come through, you just start moving it around. You do not want to hold it still in one place. You just want to continue to move that heat. And when I wasn't using my heat gun, I did just go ahead and click that stand down and I always just set it upright. But this is really, really fun to do. And I'm telling you, I had so much fun making this frame crackle up. Yeah. 
The really nice thing about crackling your frame is because you're hitting it with the heat gun, the thing is completely dry when you're done making the crackle show through. So now I'm ready to put my scrapbook paper back in there and then I'm about to do a little bit of surgery on some styrofoam bunnies that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I got these little bunnies, they were actually picks. I just pulled the little dowel that was in it out and now I'm just taking my X-Acto knife and I'm cutting them in half. Yes, they do have glitter on them and yes, glitter is my nemesis, but these actually weren't that bad. Some of the glitter did fall off, but when I go to paint it, I actually like the fact that it has glitter on it. So I'm just gonna cut them in half very carefully and then I'm gonna end up with three of these that I wanna turn into chocolate bunnies. For the second bunny, I went ahead and heated up the blade on my heat gun to see if that made a difference cutting the styrofoam, and boy did it. It just cut so easily. So there you go, you can heat up your blades to make cutting a little bit easier. Now, my three bunnies are finished. I did pull out their little eyeballs that they had because I didn't like them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and paint these bunnies with two coats of the Truffle Waverly chalk paint. And I'm gonna kind of dab it on because it gives the bunny some texture like those chocolate bunnies that kind of have the little bit of hair that you can see, which I know sounds kind of weird, but um, it gives them more detail. So that's what I was saying about, I like the fact that there's glitter on here because it gives these bunnies some really awesome texture. the bunnies are drying I'm just gonna go ahead and secure it on my pom-pom garland now all I did to string this up was take a yarn needle and some twine and I just fed it through all five of the little balls and starting in the center I'm just gonna take some hot glue and secure each of these little pom-poms down and then I'll just trim off the extra twine at each of the ends To give my bunnies a little bit more of a realistic look, I'm gonna take some of the Gloss Mod Podge and just paint one coat on each of the bunnies. I'm gonna let that dry, and then on the center bunny, I'm going to tie a little piece of twine into a bow. And then my final step will be to attach these bunnies to my sign just using some hot glue. For the next project, I will be working with some wooden spoons, but you certainly could pick up any wooden um, utensil that you'd like. I'm gonna paint each of the stems on these a different color. This one I'm gonna paint with the Ballet Slipper Pink Waverly Chalk Paint, and I started to paint here, and then I realized, oh shoot, I forgot to put my washi tape down so that I could get a crisp line where I wanted this to start. So here I am taking my washi tape and setting it around the stem so I know exactly where to start. And then I'm going for the yellow spoon. I wanted to do stripes. So again, using some washi tape, I will just wrap it and paint it. And then the last spoon will be a blue handle, just like the pink one at the same height. Again, using some washi tape so I can get that nice crisp line. Once they're all painted, go ahead and pull off the washi tape and you should end up with some really nice clean lines and some very pretty colored handles. Now we are ready to work with our printables. So I just made this up on the computer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the bunny. I'm gonna trim around it so I can get it kind of small enough because I will be tracing the outline of this image onto the top of one of my spoons. I'm just gonna take a pencil and go the old school way of getting this transferred. So just scratch the back of the bunny and get it all covered. 
And then um, when I lifted the bunny up, I thought this was hilarious that it transferred through onto the paper underneath it. And here I am just zooming in to show you that I thought that was really funny. I don't know y'all, simple pleasures. I mean, what can I say? And then once I've got that done, I'm gonna put the template of my bunny down onto the top of the spoon and then just take my pencil and lightly outline around the bunny. going to take my scorch marker and just outline this bunny and then go ahead and fill it in. This is a chemical that will allow the heat gun to burn just in this area and I'll be using again the Wagner heat gun. It is the HT400 if you are wondering what model it is and so I'm just going to do the same technique where I do not hold the gun in one place. I'm just going to move it around. I start on low heat just to kind of set it and then I do end up turning it up to the high heat and you can burn it as dark as you want. I mean, the longer you have the gun on it, the darker it will get. For the other two spoons, I'm going to go through the exact same process. I'm going to trace the word hip on one and hop on the other. Then I will trace those words with my scorch marker and then again hit it with my heat gun. project I will be working with one of these Dollar Tree candles. I printed out some images on the artist's graphic paper that I have been using. It's transfer paper. I will link it down below if you're interested and I did just review it on my February monthly favorites and flops. I'll link that one down below as well. Once I have my images printed out, all I'm going to do is just trim around the one I want and I decided I wanted to use the flowers that I had printed out and it's really simple to get it transferred. So I'm going to take my image and put it face down against the candle. Then I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper and just wrap it around and then I'm going to take my heat gun and just go over the image until the candle kind of starts to sweat. At that point, I will peel off the back of the paper and my image is nicely transferred to my candle. If your image is a little bit loose, mine was a little bit loose on one of the edges. I just hit it with the heat gun without the parchment paper and it immediately adhered the rest of the way. So very easy to do. And then the last step to get my candle finished, I'm just gonna wrap it with some twine. To display my candle, I'm going to use one of these little wreath decor pieces that they have from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to paint it with some of the Ballet Slipper Waverly Chalk Paint and then I'm going to take some twine and just wrap it three times around the edge of this and that'll make a nice little place for me to set my candle. And there you have it. I had so much fun making all three of these projects with this heat gun. If you're in the market for a great one, I will have all the details linked down below. Definitely check it out. Let me know which one of these projects was your favorite. And if you already have a heat gun, let me know what projects I should try. I definitely plan on trying some jewelry projects in the near future. Please give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying spring DIYs. And if you aren't subscribed, I would love for you to stick around by hitting the subscribe button and the bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.